You haven't put the title music on. Um, ho hello, everyone. Um, this is the first and um, kind of trial episode of our um, new show called Podcast 451, where um, we don't really want to burn your books, but technology is kind of doing that for us anyway, so we just have to kind of follow along. Um, I am one of your hosts on this show. I am Creep Creeperson in North Hollywood, California. I am a filmmaker and a um, musician type, and I am the author of books such as the Slasherton series and Unsane Sam and um, other things. And this is... I'm Zoe. <laughs> You sounded really professional. Did I? Yes. That's crazy. So do I have to say what I do? What's that? So I yeah, what do you, what what do, you do? do? Of course. Okay. Well, I illustrate the Splashington book, which is really cool. I am doing the Dick Smith advanced 3D makeup course at the minute, which is taking a lot longer than it should be. Due to money <laughs> and lack of motivation. <laughs> um, what else do I do? I do lots of. I'm an artist. I do portraits of various film um, icons. Would you say? A lot of horror icons. A lot of classic icons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do the covers for some of your books, which uh -huh. is a try, bit of trial and error. I'm just getting to grips with the Adobe 9 element, which I'm quite proud of myself, but there's a lot to be learned. <laughs> I'm also just about to start creating my own t-shirt, so watch this face. <laughs> are, are the t-shirts are, are going to have your face on them? No, they're going to have... <laughs> Actually, no, they're going to have print. I'm going to try and be serious. They're going to have basically print of my print of portraits on there. And we're also going to... You're laughing. I'm not we're laughing. Also, <laughs> I'm excited. We're also going to try and do the flashes and tees at some point, but I'm going to need a bit of practice before then. And, you know, I was thinking it might be quite good at some point to maybe do uh, one of these broadcasts from the studio so I can show everybody my equipment. That oh, would be yeah. really cool. That and I could good. do an episode from the bathroom so I could show everyone my equipment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't want our, ra our ratings to go to minus figures. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was horrible. Okay. Um, I'm actually sweating. I'm are sweating you? with fear. Yeah. Oh, the fear is over. And and where are you? Where are you located? Oh, thank you for asking. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually located in County Durham, in the northeast of England, in the UK. Wow. Uh huh. See, for for those of you in America, that's Durham County. We, yeah, we, do, we do things different. We're, know, we're backwards over here. It is, it is County Durham. So. Yes. Um, and you know what else? Let me just say. Uh, yeah. I'm just having um, a little, little glass of wine. And I'm just having a little glass of coffee. Okay. And my glass cute, my cup. This is one of the many cups I, I drink on the show. I think you yeah. need to have a different cup each episode so people get to see. I think I should, because I have many a cups that do all have, have many a cup. cute little things like this on them. Yeah, that's one of the nicer ones. This mm -hmm. was uh, purchased at uh, Ralph's grocery store about six Halloweens ago. I used to have a green one, and it broke. Mm -hmm. And I have a purple one. I've seen the so, purple one. 
that that's uh, that's. Can just... I just say as a sidetrack that we need to cover at some point the difference between Halloween here and there because you have such an amazing Halloween thing compared to us. Like you'll really? be starting to prepare for it now. Well, how about you? this? When no, we uh, September tenth around is when um, Target really starts kicking up the Halloween really? season. Yeah. Oh so like God. the beginning of September. And um, it's like after all the back to school shit. But then um, yeah. the the monster cereals will be available in grocery stores in September. So I'll have my Count Chocula and my Boo Berry oh. and my Frankenberry. Yeah. yeah. So um, how about in October if we're doing this weekly and this works, we'll start like every week talk about a different aspect of how Halloween's different from here and there. So now you get your taste of culture here on the P451. <laughs> that sounded yeah. professional. Yeah, it really did. We're very yeah. good at this. Natural. We're extremely awesome. Um... So, uh, another thing, since we're talking about everything, um, we should talk about what the fuck we're doing this show for. So, um, the main idea of this show, I don't know what is going on over here. The main idea of the show is, um, it's mainly about literature and ebooks, and the reason why... Um, we're pushing so hard on like the ebook thing is because Zoe and I are doing the Slasherton series together. Um, if you haven't seen it or whatever, it's uh, you could go to slasherton.com and see what it is. It's a children's book series for adults, so it's very graphic and very filthy, um, but it's cute little like Mister Men kind of guys. Have you and, got the book um, first? Oh, holy. Here is Sack. Now you could get Sack this week for free on Amazon.com. The ebook version, not not the hard copy. Oh yeah, you can't get the, you know, because yeah. we're burning books here. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's cute little pictures and stuff, and Yay. stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. But so we're doing those, and then um, we're also I'm doing a bunch of little like novellas and short stories and. Um, all this stuff, and we're we're trying to put books out like every week, and the Slasherton books we're trying to do every month, and um, we have ran into a lot of issues and a lot of problems and formatting issues, and all this stuff was like new to us, and um, it's been quite a roller coaster ride of trying to figure out what the hell we're doing because we're not like super awesome tech nerds. In fact. How many days has it taken us to figure out how to do what we're doing right now? Just a fucking Google Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> how long has it taken me, and how much wine has it taken me to get on here as well? <laughs> it has been quite... <laughs> Dude, I... I'm learning more now than I learned in college. Yeah. I'll just say that, like... It's been a steep learning curve, hasn't it? We've had to pick up... You have, in particular. <laughs> because as you'll probably find out as you go along, I don't know a lot about anything <laughs> technical at all. <laughs> and I'm not going to even try to. But I think that's quite a good way to come from it, if you know what I mean, because I'm... You know what? That, that is, but I don't want you to sell yourself short, because you've learned a bunch of shit on Adobe that you didn't yeah, know two months yeah, ago. Yeah, that's true. That's true, I have, yeah. And it's all going to be more and more useful as I go along. It's going to, like today, doing the banner for the podcast and stuff like that. I did that without having to ring you and ask you what to do, which is quite an achievement. Totally, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Okay. And the, so. and the bacon cover the other day. I managed to do that by myself as well, which was uh, awesome. The bacon <laughs> cover is awesome. I yeah, you love have to wait the bacon. To see cover. that guys, it's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. Um it we'll we'll talk about when all that stuff's coming out in a little bit. But um so basically we want to help people cuz I've been already getting 
messages from other authors and stuff about like how do how do you format, how do you do this, blah 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 blah. And the other thing is, is that there's a lot of really good podcasts out there who will explain all this stuff to you. And there's a lot of good books out there that will tell you how to do all this stuff and blog sites and all this stuff. But <clears throat> for me, like, I would hear these podcasts and these people who have a knowledge of tech stuff are explaining all this shit. And I still don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No, they're, they speak in a language that assumes that you understand the terminology, which you don't. Yeah, it's which... simple as that. <laughs> which I totally don't, and I had the Not fucking... Not you, me, anybody who's just sipping into it and who's just thinking about doing it is not going to understand what they're talking about, are they? Unless, you're, the unless you're really smart or one of Mike's kids, yeah. you're not going to know how to do kid. any of this stuff. Six-year-old kids. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to talk about that, and if you guys have any questions, I, I don't know how this works. I don't even know if you guys could get on here or anything like that. But um, if you can, you could leave comments right now. Um, I just had to make sure I didn't post all that shit in the spew. Um, but no, it, it, it's on our it's on our page. Um, have you posted if you, that we're actually doing this right now? Well, I didn't post it right now. I posted it 13 minutes ago. Have you let them know that we're doing it? So. I said, so in two minutes, okay, yeah, look, I'll oh do this. Oh, my God, you, you said you weren't going to do that. No, I didn't. The pressure. There's no pressure. We already got through as the pressure takes, part. As she takes another glug of wine. Right? Mm-hmm. So anyhow, <clears throat> um, if you guys have any questions about how to do stuff, let us know. But the And if you could leave, you could either go to um, the Facebook group, which is Podcast 451, or you could go to um, the you if you're watching this right now you already know where the fuck to go but um, you could leave comments on the live stream and we will try to answer them and then probably more likely than not the audio of these shows um, I will put up on uh, probably the Creeperson cast feed so have you worked you, out how to do that already I mean yeah I crash my computer downloading virus film oh, yeah. softwares, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay now, you know, that's just, that's how I do it, I, um, I, I tend to download things without wearing a prophylactic, and, um, I catch viruses, <laughs> so, anyway, <clears throat> so that's that, but, um, there's gonna be a lot of things that we don't know how to do, and in fact, later on in this episode, I'm going to be asking you guys a question, and hopefully if there's any authors out there, self-published authors, who are watching this, they could go, oh, you dumbass, this is how you do it. It's so easy. You're so stupid. And then just That's let us know. Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we're screwed. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, what books are you reading right now, Zoe? Oh, okay. Funny you should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens to happen. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, people. Mm. It's a book called Anno Dracula by Tim Newman. Now, Tim Newman's a journalist who's good friends with Neil Gaiman. Did you know that? I did not. Um... And he writes all sorts of stuff, really cool stuff. And I've written a few notes down because I knew I'd forget stuff because I am a goldfish. It has to be said. It's true though, isn't it? Uh... Um, it is, it is true. Okay. Now, one of the books that I've been meaning to get for ages by him is called Nightmare Movies. Have you heard of that one? Uh-uh. Is that um, a... It's like a film review book. But he keeps adding to it every year, and it's absolutely enormous, like, tons of book reviews, of horror films. And it's really, really in-depth, cool sort of review, so I want to get that eventually. The thing is, it's my birthday coming up soon, I will be mentioning that. <laughs> but this and, book, and, and, do... and your wish list is located where? <laughs> At Amazon. I'll, I'll drop the um, Amazon wish list address in the 
podcast note. Anyway, uh, I, just, okay. I just want to show you this guy as well, look. I was going to ask you. He's not very horror. It's great. It's a little hippo. Herman. <laughs> That's what he's actually called. Is, Her is Herman from something? No, he's just a hippo. Did you name him Herman? Yeah, Herman. You have to say it like Herman. Herman. Yeah, I'm bringing down the sun. It's supposed to be professional. I'm oh, going this to is read super out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read out the back. A savage new era has arrived. It is 1888, and Queen Victoria has remarried, taking as her new consort. Oh God. I don't know how to pronounce that. Wallachian? Wallachian? Wallachian. Is that Prince. a name? I don't know. Okay. Infamously known as Count Dracula. Ooh. His polluted bloodline spreads through London as its citizens increasingly choose to become vampires. In the grim back streets of Whitechapel, a killer clown as... <laughs> a killer... <no> <laughs> <laughs> Not a killer clown, people. I'm getting my film. <laughs> a killer known as Silver Knight is cutting down vampire girls. The eternally young vampire Genevieve and Charles Beauregard of the Diogenes Club are drawn together as they both hunt for the sadistic killer, bringing them even closer to England's most bloodthirsty ruler yet. So basically, What's happened in this series? There's three books. This is the first one. The next one is The Bloody Red Baron, which is set in the First World War. And then the third one is Dracula Cha Cha Cha, or in America, it's Judgment of Tears. <laughs> Stop laughing. And that was set in 1959. So it's like 30 years. So they changed the title to from Dracula Cha 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 to Judgment of Tears because that's America all over, isn't it? <laughs> What's wrong with Cha Cha Cha? I like that's Cha Cha Cha. I'm, <laughs> I'm mad. I want the book called Cha Cha Cha. You're saying it a lot more posh than I am. Cha Cha Cha. Cha Cha Cha. <laughs> but basically, what's happening is this is like an alternative um, reality where Van Helsing has been killed by Dracula, Nina's a vampire, and he's married Queen Victoria, so Dracula's in charge, basically. And it's also this story combined with the Jack the Ripper and Whitechapel and all that kind of thing going on. So it's, it's really good. I haven't read that much of it yet. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you are, Hermie. <laughs> Herman. So, there you go. It's really good read. Kim Newman's a really good author. He's worth looking at. And the other one I just want to quickly mention that I've got to read after is Moriarty, Hound of the D'Urbervilles, which I don't know if you've heard of Tess of the D'Urbervilles, by Thomas Hardy. Quite a classic. But it's a combination, it's basically um, like an alternative thing. Instead of Sherlock Holmes and Watson being the heroes, it's Moriarty and Colonel Sebastian Basher Moran, who's his sidekick. And they're both sort of evil masterminds, but they're the two sort of anti heroes of the book. So it That's sounds cool. like that, doesn't it? Yeah. So they're really good, really interesting and well written. So there you go, that's what I'm reading. Very nice. I am actually, I'm, I'm reading a couple things. Um, I, I don't have the tangible hard copy of the book, but uh, a book that I'm reading right now that I've read a bunch of times and I just keep reading it whenever I start talking about it is 
uh, Kurt Vonnegut's Breakfast of Champions, and it's uh, my favorite book ever. It's about <clears throat> um, the meeting of Kilgore Trout and Dwayne Hoover at the Midland City Arts Festival, and what happens as they are coming closer and closer together to the explosive thing. And uh, Kurt Vonnegut writes in a way that is so amazing. I just, I love his stuff. And um, I was, I just read Cat's Cradle again. Here, I can show you an old copy of that. You've actually recommended um, Breakfast of Champions to me, haven't you? I've got it to start reading. Let's have a look at that cover again. That's a lovely cover. This is an old one. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, I, I really like it. And then I was looking over um, Slapstick again. I like this cover a lot. Oh, it's that's like really a little good. snowman with like a thing. And then it's in plastic because it's super, it's like a old printing of it. And for a bookmark, I have toilet paper. So you could imagine <laughs> where I go when I read this. <laughs> but um, I, I can't stress enough how amazing Breakfast of Champions is. It's like it, he he's writing it in a way like he's explaining a story to you, but it's like he's telling it to you like you've never been on Earth before. And um, like... Uh, like, you don't know what an American flag is or what a beaver is or what an asshole is or all this stuff. So he draws these crude little drawings for you in case you're unaware of what these things are. I've noticed flicking through. The oh, of so flicking good. And through. Kilgore Trout is, like, probably the raddest curmudgeon character of anything. And he's in a few of his books. It's just... It, it, it just makes me sad, and like what I was saying on Facebook the other day was, through the years, I have bought that book so many times, um, and I would take it with me everywhere I would go, and I'd go to coffee shops or diners or whatever, and I would sit and read it over and over and over and over and over again, and everyone I would come into contact with, I'm like, oh, have you ever read Breakfast Champions? It's the greatest book ever. And I would read it, and then it would get all tattered, and then when it got so fucked up, I would... Or if I was at a bookstore and I saw a different cover than the one I had, I would lend it the one that was all fucked up to somebody and say, this is the greatest book ever, read it. And then they would borrow it and never give it back to me. And that happened probably five or six times. So it's That's like the sign of a fantastic book, isn't it? If people steal it? Yeah, not give it back. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so... Um, I was looking around for it the other day, and I and I couldn't find a copy of it in my place. So um, I went to download the ebook of it, <clears throat> and when I did it, I got really sad because I'm like, this is the last time I probably ever purchase this. Because oh, no, you can't you, say that. You know what I'm saying? It's like I have it yeah. now, so it's like I can't. I could lend a ebook out, but I'll still have it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's not like it doesn't work like that though. If you walk past the bookshop and you see a different cover of it, you'll end up with a Well like the cover it. you have for it, I I don't have that cover. Yeah. And, and I got all like that. bummed out. I'm like, oh <laughs> so That's what's great about books though, isn't it? Yeah, so it's just it's bittersweet. Because I, I, I love, I never thought I would read on an iPad or an iPhone or anything like that. But honestly, I absolutely love it. I love being able to just, it holds my place for me. It, um, I could skip through the table of contents. If there's links in it, I could click the links. And it's just, it's so pleasurable for me. So I really, really enjoy that. Um, you could direct to the hard copy, though, to the paperback. Sometimes and sometimes not. You know, like, I... It's convenient. I don't think I would like to go to a coffee shop and sit and chain smoke and read on my iPad. 
you know, because I'm no, always worried funny. about getting it dirty and shit. So it's like when I would have my book, I would slam it down on the table. Coffee would spill. Some exactly. fucking That's eggs would it. drop on it or something. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm fucking sitting here eating my shit. Ah. And, I know. Um, but that's yeah. half the beauty of it, when they're well thumbed, isn't mm -hmm. it? It shows how much you love a book when you've thumbed through it so many times. Totally. And I kind of, I'm not, I'm a bit sort of old-fashioned. I haven't come round to the, I haven't got a Kindle. I haven't, haven't really got any books on, um, I haven't got an iPad. But, the, you know, I've got the Kindle app on my phone. Have you read books on your phone before? No. I have. It, I really thought it would be weird, but I read um, I read a Bukowski book on my phone a while ago, and it was um, it was kind of weird. And I've been reading um, The Soft Machine by William S. Burroughs on my phone. Really? And, yeah, and it's it's not bad. It's not like the print's so small. It's just like there's only like six words on a page. Yeah, I was going to say, is that how they do it? Like, you buy it up. <laughs> so, like, if you were to like to have page numbers, the book would be like thirteen hundred and eighty-seven pages. Yeah, you know? but um, that's what I wondered because it's it's tricky, that isn't it? With it being so small, I would rather listen to an audio book on the phone. You say. I've been doing a lot of audio books too on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you said uh, that. There was a lot of the um, Vonnegut ones, wasn't there? You've been listening to. There's on a, there's a lot there's a lot of Vonnegut. There's um. There's not a lot of Hunter S. Thompson, but there's it's a not. lot of different people who do Fear and Loathing on there. Mm. So, um, and there's one um, Fear and Loathing book on there that's uh, like Jim Jeremouche and Harry Dean Stanton and a bunch yeah. of people like that doing it. And there's like music and car tires screeching and oh, all really? sorts of shit. Yeah, it's really cool. They leave some stuff out of the book, but it's a lot of fun. It's, well, it's cool. Is there an unabridged version of it, though, do you know, or not? Um, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. But just, it probably uh, it's, is. It, it's fun. It's just the, if you're used to, if you're a fan of the movie, let's say, yeah. and you're used to Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro doing the voices, when you yeah. listen to the audiobook, it's weird because the more normal voice like this is Raoul Duke, the Johnny Depp character, and, yeah. and the one who's like, oh my gosh, da 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 da, da. that's the lawyer, that's Doctor yeah. Gonzo. So it's like that's confusing. It's a little confusing at first, but then you get used yeah. to it. But Harry Dean Stanton's the narrator, and it's great. Oh really? Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's got. A I great love voice Harry Dean. Yeah, he's got. A so, great voice. you know, I could tell you a story, oh, a couple God, stories a story? of Harry Dean and oh, me. Um, spending a night drinking and eating ravioli. Do you really want me to tell you the story? <laughs> do I, you tell me? Do I want to know it? Like it, yeah, we like we went to um, uh, fucking Spago's or no, some fucking restaurant in um, like West LA or. West Hollywood or something and then we went to and we would do this like every Thursday night and we went to this restaurant on Santa Monica called Dantana's and we would go there like right before they would close and they would let us stay there and they would bring out the ashtrays and we could chain smoke and um, all this other shit and I was just so excited to like be hanging out with Harry Dean because he's amazing and like I was just like, you know, like, you know, I really want to, you know, find out about, like, Fire Walk with me and, like, you know, uh, when you were, like, doing the scenes at the, the Trout Trailer Park or the Fat Trout Trailer Park or whatever. And he's just getting up there, and he was super stoned, too, so I don't know, but he's just, like, he leans over to his driver, and he's like, what the fuck's he talking about? Mm -hmm. And he's like, he wants to know about the David Lynch movies. And he's like, was I in a David Lynch movie? And he's like, yeah, you've been in a couple. And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't remember. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dude, I was so pissed. And then, um, yeah, he went outside and smoked a joint, and Kid and Play came up and tried to, like, hang out. It was really weird. So, How old, um, was, how old was he? 
this was like a two years ago. So how old was it? It was right when he stopped doing Big Love. That doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, I know. I don't know how <laughs> old he was. He was up there, but he's he's a lot of fun. Reckon, he's a super nice guy. How old do you think? Like seventies, eighties? Hi, uh, he's probably in his eighties. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting on, isn't he? But he's yeah. he's got a great face, hasn't he? Oh my gosh! And, and he's he got this, like he's got this like knot, or he had it. Has I don't, he? Yeah. yeah, he's oh he's so cool though, dude. He's such a nice guy, and yeah. he wants to like cut everyone's food for him, like really. Yeah, he's just super nice. Like oh, let me get that for you. You know, it's just oh. he, he's great. But um, so anyway, that was a whole lot of fun. But um. Uh, one of the other things we are going to do on this lovely show is news about books and ebooks and fun stuff like that. So um, the first thing to talk about is um, today it was released. I got to pull it up here. Is this the right one? No. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Can I just ask are you? Are you going off off piece here? Because we've got a list of things. You know when you yep. ski and you just go off cross country. Are you doing that with our list of things that no. in the order? No, I'm 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 in order right now. Oh, are you? Yeah. Um. So. Uh, oh, got Jaws. Me. Okay. Uh, the Woo. 40th anniversary of Jaws um, is right now, I guess. And so, what um, the publisher Ballantine Books is doing, they're they're releasing a special edition of. Oh. You missed it. <laughs> You're missing five. Watch your hand. You're gonna get bit. I know. Um, I have to keep my safe distance. <laughs> they're releasing a special edition of the book that uh, features excerpts from Benchley's archives and his own book about making uh, the bestseller in the subsequent Spielberg film. Okay, so <clears throat> blah 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 blah. But one of the neat things that it has is um, there's this That's article cool. on Huffington. Post books that there were all of these alternative titles because when That's the Twitter isn't it? I'm sorry. That was Twitter, isn't it? No, it's actually on the Huffington Post uh, website. Oh, I thought you got it through a Twitter link. Sorry. I, I got it through a tweet, but I didn't find out what the hell it was talking about. It's like Jaws, da 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 da. Okay. But apparently, while like even when the book was finished, he had no idea <laughs> what to call it, and so they released these pictures of uh, six different sheets of scribbled paper where all of these titles would um, that he was writing. And so some of these titles, like what were some of your favorite titles from those? Favorite one, Phosphorescence. I don't know why you're laughing at this, but it's because it's, <laughs> it's just so weird. Bit. Phosphorescence. <laughs> Can you imagine that poster behind you and it's all phosphorescence? I know it's a bit crap when you think like it, but it's, it's, I think it's maybe from the arty side of me, because that's what I remember as one of the things, because it, if people don't know me, Jaws is like my favourite film of all time, isn't it? I absolutely love it. Best film ever. And uh, most of the reason why I love the film is the atmosphere and the warmth from it. I don't know if you, I mean, people know that anyway, but it's the the characters, yeah, the three main characters, but also that kind of warm glow that he kind of creates with the sunlight and the warmth, and even at night time, the shooting stars, that's the classic Spielberg thing, there's always a shooting star going over and stuff, isn't there? And I remember when, I think it's when they've tagged, you know, they've put the barrels on the shark, and they're all sitting, and I think it's before they show me the way to go home scene and stuff, and the barrels pop up, and the sea's quite calm and stuff, but the barrels pop up, and all the sort of green, luminous algae around the barrels is phosphorescent. And it's kind of that sort of, it's quite a, a poetic way of describing that looming, because it's movement through the water that creates that luminescence, that phosphorescence, and I think that's quite quite poetic way of seeing it. But when you think of it as a poster, you've kind of ruined it for me. Do you, have, 
Do you have the Blu-ray? Yeah, I do. The Steelbook. What is it? It's the Steelbook. You know when you get it in the steel case? The beautiful steel case. I've got the full massive beautiful edition. I'm Does very it look proud really, of it. Does it look really good on Blu-ray? Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Oh, Seriously, I'm, it's I'm super jealous right now. Yeah, it's stunning. Well, some of these okay. titles that were just hysterical to me, kind of, was The Fish at Amity and yeah. um, Dreadful good. Silence. Uh, what were some That's good not, ones? There's not many, to be honest, is there? I mean, there's how many titles do you think there are here? Omnivore Havoc. What's that all about? A bear's an omnivore, isn't it? <laughs> a shark a carnivore. I don't understand that. Um, anthropophagus, or is that a question of evil anthropophagus? I don't. I, I, I can't know. tell. Um, the white An fluke. Anthropophagus is somebody who eats humans, isn't it? What was so, the? That's a sequel to which movie? What anthropophagus? Yeah. Wasn't that like a slasher movie and it's a sequel, like a loose sequel to... Oh, okay. Humongous. We'll that. No. That's by the same director, though, isn't it? Or the same actor? Oh, you see, can I just point out to everybody here, okay? I... <laughs> One, I'm a goldfish. And I can't remember names to save my life, can I? It's quite it's tedious. And the second thing is, I'm quite new, relatively new to horror. I've sort of blasted my way through quite a lot in a short space of time, but I haven't got a huge history that goes back to my childhood of horror films. So I kind of, I get a lot of things wrong. So I'm kind of learning a lot as I go along. So you have to bear with me and... Bear with her. <laughs> and just listen listen to Creed because he knows this stuff about films a hell of a lot more than I do. Jesus Christ, Dude. why did you just... You, you just said, listen to Creep, he knows what he's talking about. And I'm like, what the fuck is Anthropophagus a sequel, bro? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, so yeah, there's some great titles here like Squam... And um, stuff like that. I just thought that was funny. Huh? What squam? I don't even know what that means. Do you? Squam. It's some sort of fucking fishy word. There's oh, all sorts okay. of words in here that um, are just fishy. Read tomorrow. Something fishy here. Great white. But anyway. It's what he was going to call it, isn't it? Great White and um, Great White, White Knight, or White Knight, Great White. I don't know. There's really? all sorts of shit. But I just, I can't, I really want to get the book. I really, really do with all yeah, this shit in I it. I don't know when it comes out, though. Do you and know when it comes that? out? No, I have oh. no idea. Oh, my gosh. I think it's out now. And it's on Amazon right now for eleven ninety eight. Oh, wait, no. Oh, it's available August 6th. What's the date today? Yeah. The fifth. Look at this fucking picture. Oh my gosh. Oh god. Can, can, oh, hey, 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 wait. Oh <gasps> shit. Can you see it? Can yeah, see I it? can. Oh, it's like god. your poster, but it's like really. Um, oh god, oh, that's really crap. Cool. It looks really good. So, what is it? It's, is it um, a special edition of the book itself? But yeah, it's also... with a bunch of extra shit. Yeah, about the oh film gosh. and... Oh, that's yeah. really cool. I'm going to have to get that. I don't know how. Add it to the wish list. Add it to the wish list, and then you could add this, too. <gasps> Do you have that? What is it, the film? Jaws 2, the book? No, it's the book. The book? No! Yeah, based on the screenplay. It's a novelization. Oh, my God. Oh, 
Jesus H. We're getting too excited over here. Yeah, we are. We're okay. going <laughs> We got to move yeah. it along. So, um, the the next little uh, tidbit. Oh shit! I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Okay. The next Where little uh, thing we're gonna. Oh wait, no, no. We got to do. Um, since we're talking about Jaws and you love Jaws so much, we decided to do a top five when monsters attack um, list here. Because if you guys don't know, Zoe loves her When Nature Attacks movies. I really do. Really badly. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> what's your number five? Okay. Can I just show everybody? Oh, I can't. Oh. Put my hand over the actual things, but can you see all the scribbling out? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I had a bit of trouble working out the order. Let's see if I can find a number five. Okay, where's number four then? Okay, number five. Are you ready? I'm ready. I've got Stephen King's Cujo. As your number five? Mm-hmm. Don't question it because I'm starting to get nervous already about it that I've made the wrong decision. It can't be a wrong decision. It's your decision. You want to know, know what mine... I've scribbled it out so many times. Why is that your number five? Oh, because I'm thinking of the amount of times I've seen it compared with the other ones and... It's a great film. I absolutely love it. It's one of those single location, claustrophobic, um, just just a well directed good film, I think. But one, it makes me cry because I feel sorry for Cujo a bit. That's not good. And two, it's kind of it's a bit a little bit on the depressing side, which tends to make it less watchable. You know, rewatchable all the time. It's not one that I would just throw on, which you'll find out later on in the list. I could throw them on a lot. I freak out with kids in danger the whole time. Yeah. Is that why you said before, mm, I'm not sure about that? Yeah. Did it kick? Yeah. yeah. I get that. Because uh, he's really suffering, isn't he, in that? Uh, yeah. But that's what makes it such a good thriller. No, it's good, and it makes me feel like my number five is really fucking stupid, <laughs> which is... No, some of mine are really stupid, so I wouldn't worry. Really. really? Because my number five is Sharknado. Oh, I haven't even seen that. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a piece of shit. It's so <laughs> rad. It's just awesome, rad, shitty, shitty shit. It's awful. It's so stupid. But it was so yeah, much but fun. It's, but it's got sharks in the tornado, so what more do you need? It's like rain and sharks. So, how do the sharks get into the tornado? Is that a spoiler? No, it happens in the beginning. I think what it is, is that this dude, who's like this grimy dude, I did a whole Creeperson cast episode about it, so maybe you should like, yeah, you keep up. Yeah, check that out, people. <laughs> <laughs> but, I um, this, to it yet. <laughs> this guy is like trying to sell like some million dollar shark fin soup or something to some like Japanese business guy and he's all a grimy pirate looking dude and um and then like nature got mad at him for making shark fin soup and made a tornado that just sucks sharks up and nothing else so oh. it reaches shore and just starts raining sharks. And if nature was smart, it would go, oh, wow, there was only like seven or eight sharks dead in the soup, but I just killed like a thousand sharks trying to make humans upset. So logic is not the strong suit of this film by any so means. So hang on a minute, hang on. Do they leap out of the tornado and attack people. No, they're just like in the tornado and then just like they start falling. It's just like it's raining sharks. So, so what's the threat? There are fucking sharks falling <laughs> out of the sky. Yeah, but they're in, they're in land. 
So how the I mean you yeah, but walk the, away the from it. Yeah, but the comes up and so there's like water and they're kind of swimming in the streets a little bit and then like there's sharks that land in this guy's pool and uh, eat some people who are swimming in the pool cuz you know sharks and chlorine are totally okay together. Yeah. So there's there's no totally. issue there. But um yeah, the main scary bits is when the sharks are like raining down on people. Yeah. And they just and land in the street and start biting people. I'm going to have to watch it, let's face it. <laughs> if, if you like my number two, you will love my number five. <laughs> so, okay, so what's your number four? Okay, I'm already doubting whether to have a... Uh, Oh, it's tricky. This is tricky. I'm going to go. You're changing your story already. No, I'm not. I'm going to go for I'm going to go for plug. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so Slugs is your number 4. Why is that movie your number 4? Oh. I'm, I don't know, because really I should have it higher up. So the amount of times I've watched it and the amount of entertainment I get out of it, it's pure cheese. There's corny lines, wall-to-wall corny lines. There's the worst acting ever. There's heads exploding in restaurants. What more can you want? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? A plot? <laughs> Who needs a plot when you have heads no, blowing there's, up in the there's, there's half a plot there, so that's okay. Oh, my really? my number four is um, Piranha 3D. Oh. Which is a fun. really bad choice, but it's just fun. No, it is fun. Because really I'm not fun. scared of, like, animals. Like, I mean, animals freak me out if they're, like, pissed off at me. But I'm not like, oh my god, I'm so scared. Because, like, the original Piranha is a lot more terrifying, yeah. you know? But Piranha 3D is just fun. And I yeah, like having it fun. And Piranha Double D is kind of fun, and it has one of my favorite lines ever, which is, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was something like, um, Josh cut off his penis because something came out of my vagina. <laughs> Yeah, which happens, right? <laughs> but I mean, but 3D is just—it's just a lot of fun, and it has Christopher Lloyd in it. Well, I don't want to say about whatever. Okay, so what's your number three? My number three, Grizzly. Jesus. Grizzly. <laughs> Grizzly, tell us all about Grizzly. Oh, seriously. If you haven't seen Grizzly, you really... Oh, you haven't seen it, have you? I haven't seen it. Oh! Nobody has quite used an oversized, bare paw... I can't do it because I can't get my hand right on the show, on the show. A big bear claw <laughs> prop more effectively than in this movie. There's Women getting chopped a bit with huge claws. There's even a little boy in the garden gets attacked. It's pretty impressive. And what makes me laugh every time is the fact that the grizzly seems to turn to a black bear or a brown, a black bear when it's running because <laughs> you just get shots of its feet <laughs> and it's like a brown, a black bear running. And then when it stands up. It's a grizzly, and it's one big grizzly. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. It's horny. It's got Christopher George as the main... Um, Bear. Uh, what do you call them? Ranger? What uh -huh. do you guys call them? Yeah. Park rangers. And yeah, and he's setting people off to go and find it, and he's got this friend who's like an environmental or a biologist who's up there studying them 
and covered in bare musk scent so they don't smell him out. And it's so just basically great. Steven Spielberg just ripped off Jaws, or ripped off Grizzly to make Jaws. Of course he did. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> this is your classic takeoff, and it's just great. It's really good fun. But some of the effects, it's really gory as well in places. Yeah. But it's a bit slow in the middle. I have to, after watching that again recently, I noticed it is. It does sort of slow down a little bit in the middle, but there's some great kills in it. And it's just, it's, you have to watch it. You I promise will. me you're going to watch it. I, I will watch it, I swear. I, I, I love so. I love 70s and early 80s yeah. shit crap. Uh, but my number, my number three is arachnophobia. Oh, I've got that on my list. <laughs> you do have it on your list? No, but it's higher. Ah, oh, it's so good, and John Goodman it is, is so great. Good. Oh, but that movie scared the shit out of me. I was so afraid of spiders. It is absolutely terrifying. I should have put that in my top five, really, but I can't. I can't have everything but, in my top five. And that's a movie that doesn't. It like I could watch that now and still be as completely freaked out. Yeah, me too. So, and when the big spider jumps up, oh. I fucking screamed. I mean, I'm a little fucking kid in the movie theater, and I yeah. did not like that at all. It makes me cringe when it's crawling up his leg and its eyes are all like goggly and reflecting with it. Oh god, it's just And you see the fire in all in all his yeah. eyes. Oh my god, dude, Absolutely. so good. So good. Can I just say that I I've watched so many horror films and gory stuff and you know, as every kind of gore that you can possibly think. But the only film that has ever made me like physically cringe is arachnophobia. Really? And that's the, that is the truth. It's made me like itch and cringe. And that's quite an achievement, isn't it, really? Really good. That's rad. Um, what's your number two? My well, number two is Piranha. The original Piranha. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love it because this is a nostalgia thing. Because I remember when I was a kid, this is one of the first horror films that I ever got to see. And it wasn't at my house. My parents had gone over to their friends over the road in Spain, dropped my little village in the middle of nowhere. And I was hanging out with my best friend, Ben. We were only about eight or ten or something. Eight, I think, probably. And he used to watch horror films. And I wasn't allowed to. And because they were all hanging out and having a meal and stuff in the other room, we were just sitting, you know, chilling out and watching this film. And it was Piranha. And all I remember about it is the brown water and the fish swimming up and the old guy sitting on the end of the jetty, you know, with his legs dangling off and them eating his legs. And I was absolutely petrified. I couldn't believe it, but I couldn't not watch it either. And I remember it now. And when I watch it, it still has that same kind of, I mean, it's cheesy, yeah, it is, but I still find it really creepy, and it's the thought of it. And the scenes in the, with the kids, is that another thing that affects you? I, I, I don't like scenes with kids. Like I know. Movie. But, like, is, um, like, do you know if that was heavily edited? I don't I have no idea. You mean for the DVD? No, for um, UK. Probably. I mean, let's and, be fair. And it was just on television, right? Yeah. It so was. it was probably like a super edited. Yeah, version it was of probably it. a really like a total pussy <laughs> version of it. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I couldn't believe it. Oh, that's but It rad. was just like. But it was so cool to see because I just wasn't allowed to watch things like that. It wasn't It wasn't that my parents were strict about it, but it, we just didn't watch that kind of thing, really. And it was just like, oh, God, this is so good. So, yeah, I remembered it vividly. Pretty cool. Um, like, in the Piranha... 3D. There's that scene where the kids are like going up. They they put their feet in the water and they step on the glass or whatever. And you see the 
the fish oh, coming they go up. To the, they go to the island, don't they? That's, yeah. yeah, and I'm like going, oh my god, if those kids get eaten, I'm checking out. I'm checking yeah, the fuck out of this right now. And then they're like, hey, yeah. we're back on the sand. Everything's fine. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but, um, you see, they didn't do that in the 70s, did they? But those poor kids were getting bitten left, right, and center, weren't they? <laughs> it was pretty disturbing when you think about it. Well, but that's what I kind of liked about it more, because it was like the kind of toy with that was the fact that you were uncomfortable seeing that happen. Yeah. You know? Um, and did have that, was Barbara Steele in it? She, Barbara Steele's in it, isn't she? She's one of the biologists or somebody, I'm sure. We will have to check that. Yeah, we will. I'm, sure um, I'm, having, I'm having flashes of humanoids from the deep. And I'm knowing, I'm knowing that that's not the right movie, but I keep like picturing like murky water, and I'm like, oh okay, oh wait, no, that's not Piranha, that's I humanoids. I need to see that. I have that here, and I've not watched it. Oh yeah, that would be it's a good, good double feature. Was well, it? it's not amazing, but there's a lot of like boobage. That's got a great poster too. Oof. Is that the what? Is it? It's like the chick laying down, and then the eyes. Oh, I don't know that one. My, my DVD cover is like water with a swimming upwards, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll look into that. Yeah, I have to. My number two is Slugs, damn it. Oh, number <clears throat> two. Number two. Slugs is amazing. It's so bad. No. It's, it's like, I really like them a lot. Like, it's, I like so good. It's... Oh, if you, in fact, I did a commentary for it on Creepers and Cast. If you wanted to ever watch that and hear me complain the entire time, it's it's a Is lot it of spoily? fun. Huh? You better not spoil it. What? How can you spoil slugs? <laughs> well, you said you complain all the way through it. Yes, you can come spoil it. We have had this <laughs> argument many a time. I'm just saying, like, if there's like a. Uh, like, there's that part where, like, the guys, like, they're in the little boat in the beginning, and the girl's like, what's going on with the water? And then she, like, goes <laughs> to take off her top, but she can't quite get it off because her boyfriend falls in the water or whatever. And it's just, like, <laughs> <coughs> it's just awesome. The dubbing is horrendous. Yeah, it it's is. It's just, fun. like, everything is just crap. Um, and the uh, whole film. Except the whole film. And then the ending. Like, hey, we just blew up the town. There's slugs everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to go fuck my wife. <laughs> I know. The thing to not worry about the fact that the whole town's blown to kingdom come. <laughs> the whole sewage um, system, everything, totally destroyed. But what's your number one? one? Well, I don't think you need to even ask me, do you? Oh, it's... Uh, What's it? Uh, phosphorus. <laughs> Phosphorescent. <laughs> no, my number one is also Jaws. Oh, so, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yay. 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 Actually, I've cheated and put Jaws and Jaws 2. I was going to do put... that. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally going to do that. Yeah. You got to do it. Cause, you know... It, it really bothers me because people give Jaws 2 such a hard time. And Jaws I love it. it's 2 is got, rad. Yeah, it's got the same warm feeling to it. It's, yes, it's not as good as Jaws, but it's not as good because it hasn't got the three main characters in it. And that's the only bit that is lacking. The yeah. only bit, I think. Because the well, rest and then you're, is, you're stuck watching a bunch of stupid teenagers, so it just it, yeah. it, it turns into a slasher movie with a big fish. Yeah. But do you know what? They're kind of likable kids. Do you not think? Most because of them. Prop- yeah, they're proper kids. They're not like, you know, absolutely stunning, you know, perfect, rich kids. They're just kids out having fun. And yeah, they're a bit dorky and a bit sort of, you know, whatever. But they're not, and they react properly, you know? Like, is it is it Tina in the, in the bottom of the boat? That always makes me like, you know, when she, when he gets dragged in, the boyfriend gets killed, mm-hmm. and, and like his hands come over the edge, and he gets pulled off, and she's well, like, and then he eats a helicopter. Yeah. Like that's always good fun. 
Cool. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a good film. It is really good. And it's got Roy in, so can't go wrong there, can you? Apparently not. <laughs> He's a legend. <laughs> not as legendary as Tom Atkins. Don't even bring up... <laughs> I'm only kidding. Dude, I knew that was going to happen. No, he's way more legendary than Tom Atkins. That goes without saying. Okay. Okay? Truth? Okay. Go for it. So he doesn't understand. (laughs) We're going to work on that. I just want to reassure everybody. This This is a new segment on our new show, so it's obviously new. But it's called Zoe Doesn't Understand. (laughs) <laughs> this is the section <laughs> where I ask questions to Chris that I don't understand because, let's face it, it happens a lot. And I'm hoping that I'm coming from the point of view of most of the people who are listening. I heard the Department of Justice ruling could bring in app ebook purchasing back to Apple competitors. Could you explain this please, Craig? Because I don't understand. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So what this means, this is really exciting. Okay, so if you do or do not know, um, for the last, like, year, Apple's been in um, trouble for uh, price fixing and all sorts of other shit like that. And um, for ebooks and everything. <clears throat> and what's going on right now is if Apple loses all of this stuff, you're going to be able to, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, be able to go on Amazon, the Amazon app, and purchase books. Because I don't know if you have tried this before, but it pisses me off like nobody's business when I go to. Um, like download a book on my um, my iPad, and it's like, oh, you're not allowed to do this, so add it to your wish list or go online. When you're trying to download a book from where? Amazon? Yeah. So you're on Amazon, and you think, on the I app. want that. On the app, yeah, yeah, on your phone, and you think, I want that e-book. You try and download it, and it won't let you. It, it, you there's not even an option to try. It's like, oh, add this okay. to your wish list or go to your computer and do it. And it really pisses me off because like I have to like I'll be on my iPad and just all excited and then I'm like fuck and then I have to get go get my computer on all this. It's just it's a pain in the ass. But the other thing about it is is that um, Apple's prices for the iBooks, like if you have the iBooks app, which you would have if you have a iPad or a iPhone or whatever, the prices are so much fucking higher. Like, I, w- I almost bought Breakfast of Champions on my phone because I always have my phone on me. And I almost bought it on my phone for, like, twelve ninety nine, But then what? I ended up getting it, yeah. But then I ended up getting it on um, Kindle for, like, 8 bucks. So, like, that That's really so tripped me out. That's quite expensive, isn't it? It's very expensive. And, like, there's a lot of um, fancy pants people who, not fancy pants, but like published authors, known authors, their ebooks go for like 10 to 12 bucks. Some of them, I, I've seen one for like 19.99 and shit for an ebook. And I think that's oh, just that's, crazy. Yeah, that's re- when you haven't got a physical copy in your hands. That's quite Yeah, and then especially it? with like Kindle, because Kindle, you don't get to, you're not keeping it. It's just in the cloud. You yeah. know, it's like, it's not... If, if Kindle decided to take a shit one day, like, yeah, technically you would lose everything, I would think. But um, So that's just really exciting because I, I would love to be able to download shit direct. Like, it would just be, it would be great. So um, here's, here's to hoping. Explain again, this is me being really stupid, so what are Apple hoping to do? No, Apple, because they own um, the iPhone and the iPad and all this other stuff, and they have their own book retailer, they make it to where if you want to have your apps on an iPad or an iPhone or something like that... You have to buy it through iTunes. 
No, you can't buy it through the app. So if you want to purchase something like right then and there, you would have to go to iBooks, iBooks. Go to the okay. iBooks store and buy it there. So it's just it's a pain in the ass. <clears throat> and their prices are higher anyway. So it sucks. So they're going to have to stop doing that. They're getting into trouble for doing that. Is well, that they've been getting saying? into trouble for about probably two years now, I think. But they're, they've been doing appeals and all this stuff. So um, it's up to the Department of Justice, I guess, to figure it out. But as soon as they figure it out, I'm sure Apple will appeal it anyway. So um, eventually okay. this will all get fixed. But um, I don't know exactly when. So, <clears throat> I hope you learned something there. Thank you. Zoe doesn't understand. <laughs> Can I just With find Zoe. out? <laughs> With Zoe. Can I just find out that you may think we've rehearsed this section and that I do really understand and we're just going along with it, but I don't. She doesn't. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> and the theme song just came up like about when we were trying to figure out how to do the hangouts. Yeah. So um, as as the show goes, the song might get longer. It might have some. <laughs> we might add to it if you're lucky. <laughs> You've got to do this. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> so now to get into the actual self-publishing part of the show here. Um, as you know, um, since we talked about it at the beginning, we have a book series called Slasherton. It's a children's book for adults, and this is SAC, the, the first book. Um, and right now, this week only, Monday through Friday, SAC is available for free on Amazon as a free download for Kindle or whatever, Kindle app or whatever you have. So please tell everybody and pass it along and all that other stuff this week. But um, trying to get this book made as an ebook was fucking murder. And just getting the book done was really fucking hard, too. And, um, I mean, when did we start um, putting this together like we were going to do it? Was it, like, March? Yeah, I reckon it was about March. Yeah. It was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, so from March... To May, we were putting the book together, and then the entire month of May, we were doing the characters and all that stuff, but then the entire month of May, I was just trying to get a fucking proof copy of the book. Yeah. And they weren't sending it, and then there was some issues. We did it all through CreateSpace, didn't we, and through Amazon? Yeah. CreateSpace.com? CreateSpace.com, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then on CreateSpace, it gives you the option to um, do an uh, ebook to Kindle through that. And so when we did that, it came out looking like shit, like on the little previewer. And it was just like a little box on this big screen. Now, the thing that's irritating and what I started to learn as I started doing my novellas is that each e-reader reads stuff completely different. So um, when I was changing it up and trying to figure it out, um, like it would read different on an iPad than it would read on a Kindle Fire or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was trying to figure out how to code an e-book to make a .mobi file for Kindle because I really wanted the contact us links and all that stuff in the book to be clickable. And can I just can I just say that when you're saying dot mobi file and all that kind of stuff, you you lose me. Okay, We've had this thank conversation many a time. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. No, because a lot of people don't know what that means. No, they won't have a Because I thought dot mobi meant a file for your mobile phone. Yeah. And what a dot .mobi file is is what a Kindle reads. Okay. So any ebook you get on Amazon is a dot .mobi file. The other yeah. types of files there are there's um EPUB and What's EPUB that one for? um I 
if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what you send to Kobo and um, Barnes and Noble. What's Kobo? Kobo is kind of like what Amazon is in Europe. But it's obviously not as big as Amazon because Amazon.co.uk oh, is Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, because it's a different company to Kindle, isn't it? Yeah. That's right, it's a different e-reader. And speaking brand. of speaking of e-readers, Barnes and Noble had an e-reader called the Nook, and they were trying oh. to compete with Amazon's Kindle, and they just, I guess, said that they're discontinuing the Nook because they lost mm-hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars. So the president that, that who was, was in charge that was specifically Barnes and Noble had created that, had they? Specifically Barnes and Noble. Right. So, like, the Kindle specifically for Amazon, the Nook yeah. was ex- exclusively for Barnes & Noble. But um, the CEO stepped down. They lost a shit ton of money because Barnes & Noble's market share of eBooks is only 20%. So, and that's, that's only what they even sell in the store. I mean, you go into a Barnes & Noble store and really it's just like, this is the new... James Patterson book, and this is a Twilight book still, and here's The Hunger Games. Buy our three books. Yeah. You know? But um, they're still doing relatively well in print, but they've also been like closing stores and stuff like that too, so like, uh, not right this second, but they've, they're not as big as they were five years ago, obviously. Yeah. So, but with the Nook gone, that's one less device that you have to make a thing for. And um, if you want to get your ebook on Smashwords, you have to have, even though it gives you the options to do all these different... Smashwords is a, um, I guess it's an aggregator type of site uh, where you could upload your book and people could buy your ebooks on there. But Smashwords also sends your books to Barnes & Noble and Apple and um, Kobo and all these other sites oh, right. to sell your book. So it's almost like Amazon kind of thing. Yeah, but the problem with it is, is that they need a clean uh, Word document file. And in order to do that, you basically need to delete all of your default settings and go in oh, and yeah, format. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, but um, we're gonna have to do each one in more detail for people, I think, because they're gonna totally. And that's yeah. kind of what this whole thing's about. But yeah. what I ended up having to do, like as far as SAC goes, we still don't have clickable links because no, again, that's a frustrating every thing. page is a picture. Okay, yeah. and the dialogue or the words are on the the photo. So that was just I, I have no idea how to do it. So if anyone out there who's watching this knows how to HTML code a book that's basically all JPEGs, yeah, um, let me know because I was having a bitch of a time doing it. And so now I think it looks good. Like we've we've done. Zoe did a bunch of stuff to make it fit the devices better, <clears throat> and I think it looks good, but the only thing that is, like, breaking my heart right now is that our links aren't clickable. Yeah, that's it. That is frustrating, isn't it? Because yeah, because... Originally, we had to set it up um, in sort of... in WordPress. Was it WordPress? No. For what? For what? When we originally set it, like the sizes up, you know, I had to. Yeah, yeah. Um, you did it in but, Word, right? Yeah, in Word. Yeah. And we had to do it as 8.5 times 8.5. It was because we wanted, we actually wanted a smaller, like a Mr. Men size book, didn't we? To originally. Yeah. yeah. But the, they didn't give us the option on Create Space to do that. So it's the only sort of square size, the smallest square size, was the 8.5 inches. By 8.5, wasn't it? Yeah. So I had to do the pictures as they were, and I actually drew all the pictures in paint because I'm so 
technically retarded. I couldn't work out how to do it in the Derby. <laughs> So I did it in pain, but it actually worked out really well because it's so simple, the colour schemes and stuff like that. It's very easy now to click on each one and to know what I'm doing. I've got the hang of it, and it's, it's easy to sort of replicate things and get where I am with it. But it's the swapping it. You have to do it in three stages in order to get it to a file that I can send to you in Word that's in the right size. So I've got to transfer them from Paint over to Word in a on a page that's already set up to be the right size of the file that we need for the 8.5 inches square. And then, of course, it's not quite right because I've balled it up somewhere. <laughs> so I've got to stretch it. <laughs> and then I get creep messaging me going, yeah, there's a bit of white. On a couple of the pictures, I'm like, okay, brilliant. So I have to say <laughs> version two back again. And it's a real to and fro process, isn't it, until we get it right. But eventually the hard copy was in, that was how we did it. But then, of course, when we got to the e-book, we tried to print that version just to give them the same version as the paperback to convert that to the e-book version, didn't we? And it yeah. just looked like you say it was ridiculous. It, it looked like so fucking stupid. It was. It was like all white round it, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, like a huge white background. It's like the picture was like this big. Yeah. On a big giant thing. So yeah. like basically we we figured out a way to make it look good. It's like we've seen it on a Kindle, we've seen it on an iPad, we've seen it on an iPhone. It looks okay, but we just can't click the links. And I think that's one of the bonuses to having a ebook. And to get back to what we were what the show's about, with basically <clears throat> following technology and going into ebook world and kind of moving away from hard copy books, I think that it's not that books are necessarily going to die off. I just think books are going like the the pocket paperbacks. I think those are going to fall by the wayside and like hard copy or coffee table type books is what's going to be, they're going to be little art pieces, you know? Yeah, because we've discussed this, haven't we? With yeah. Books because they're so um, visual. They're the kind of books that don't really they're not really meant for Kindles and for I, you know, e-readers and what have you, because they're meant to be something that sits on a coffee table and they're meant to be picked up and looked at, you know, like a visual thing that stands out and somebody like it's eye catching and somebody looks at it and thinks, oh, you know, and wants to flick through them. And the idea was, the idea was as well, is that hopefully by the end of the series we're going to have a whole bookshelf of brightly coloured books that will look gorgeous, you know, and they're going to be like a, a collection that people can be proud to own. Totally. Is that totally. What we're going for? And like, yeah. like, is that what we're going for? <laughs> no, but like, like, like a Grimm's review of Stitch that came yeah. out yesterday or today or whatever. In the review, he even says like, this is like the perfect kind of book where if you're sitting with a friend talking about horror movies and stuff, you could pull this book out and say, well, look at this and have a lot yeah, of fun looking at it. Yeah, that's exactly what we thought, wasn't it, when we were talking totally. about that. That's the ideal <clears throat> scenario. So it's something that you put on your coffee table or you put in a man cave or something away from children. <laughs> because from you, Mike. Cadaver. <laughs> <laughs> we will stress again, these books are not for kids. And GP, so... <laughs> I'm talking to you too. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> so um, if you do know how to do any of that stuff, let us know. But um, as far as like the actual like novella and short story type books that we've been doing, like Unsane Sam and Killing a P3 and Anxious Anxiety... And this week, on Friday, Bacon's going to come out. And Bacon will be free on Saturday and Sunday. You know, So for those of you who are getting the books as soon as they come out, um, Saturday and Sunday, whenever a new release comes out, we're going to do it on the weekend. It's free that weekend kind of thing. 
and um, all that. But oh, I love the cover for Bacon. It's so cool. The, the story of Bacon is basically about this weird guy who has, he sees crimes being committed or things that he thinks might be crimes. And as these things happen, he realizes that there's, um, whenever anything bad happens, he notices that like his arm or his foot or something is wrapped in raw bacon. And that like makes him more afraid and all this stuff. So when the bacon comes, it's kind of like a spidey sense, you know? So that's what that book's about. It's a lot of fun. The cover's great. I fucking love it. I absolutely love the cover of it. What, so, what did you do? tell everybody what your daughter said about your covers? Oh, she said, she's <laughs> like, you know, these covers, they're just like, they're too 90s. They look like an old 90s book. You know, like all those, all those books you have on the bookcase, it's just, they're all bright and 90s looking. So um, that was her. It's kind of like a twisted compliment from, you know, a smart little. She's too smart for her own good, isn't she? Yeah, totally. She's 10. She knows everything. Um, but uh, what I've been using to code the, uh, the books is um, I, I use Notepad++, and that's a free download. Um, so you need to actually have it's it's like building a website is basically how you would describe it. So if you have experience in building a website, then you shouldn't have any problem with it. But um, and then from there, I put it into Calibri to like build like the table of contents and all this stuff, and that's also free, and you can download Calibri as well. Um, now a lot of people say you should be using Scrivener instead of Word, but honestly, I don't know why. I just, Scrivener was cool, but I didn't like it because I could write my book in Word and just put it in Notepad++ and do the HTML. The coding itself was a pain in the ass, and it took me forever to figure it out, but now that I've done it, it's super easy. It's just, like, click and drag and copy and paste, and so... Are you going to be able to explain that to people, do you think? Um, probably not a whole lot, but what I would suggest people do, there is a book called Let's Get Digital that, um... Can you remember it, who that's by off the top of your oh, head? Ah, shit. Account. I think I have it, actually. That's one of the only books I bought on, um, the Apple Store, actually. Um, let me see here, library... Hello, it's uh, by David Garon. How do you spell it? Um, G A U G H R A N. But um, and then he has another book called "Let's Get Visible" on how to market your eBooks, which I'm reading right now, and it's really good actually. But "Let's Get Digital" half the book is talking about why you should be making digital books as opposed to print books. So if you've already decided that you want to do ebooks, then like kind of the first half of the book is almost like useless at that point. But it's a good read and there's good information in it. But um, he has links in it to a blog that step by step walks you through how to HTML code. And um, I don't know the link off the top of my head, but if you get the book the next episode we do, I'll go over that. We can put it in. We can do it in show notes, can't we? We'll have to set up some show notes and put links there. Yeah, we can do that. What so, What were you saying there? Links to for the HTML coding. Okay. But um, so but it's really easy now. So the only thing I have to do now is write a book every week. So yeah. um, which is I I am I'm, I'm ahead three weeks, four weeks right now. Oh, so good. the next four releases that are coming, I they're already written. They just need to be edited, and um, the artwork needs to be done. So, again, this Friday, get bacon. Next Friday, you'll get gonorrhea. And, um, Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, please, like this week, Slasherton is free again. So... Don't forget that. And please, if you know anything, um, if you have any comments or anything, go to the podcast 451 
um, Facebook group and just uh, leave messages or you could leave comments on the show as we're doing it. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is the newsletters. So oh, if yeah. you could um, do the newsletters, um, actually, let's do this. You tell everyone about the Gorzet, someone's knocking on my door. Oh, cool. Okay. Do I have to tell everybody? So tell everyone the story. I'll be right back. Okay. What we did is we set up um, the Gorzet, which is basically um, a slash of the newsletter where it gives updates on all the things that you can, you know, that are coming up, that are on sale. So yeah, did you do the newsletter? I'm trying to. Okay, so for the for the Gorzet, if you go to slasherton.com, um, there's a little link for the Slasherton Gorzet, and that's what you have to... Is that to on the Facebook page? On the Facebook page for Slasherton? Yes, it's also on the Facebook page. Yeah, there's a little, um, what you call those, like a little button, a little there's card. A, there's a button, like, it's got a little, like, uh, envelope with a rainbow thing, yeah. because it's so happy it's, and everything. Yeah. So, um... So basically, on there... It gives updates of all the things that are coming up. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to promote the fact that um, people who are really loyal and who have been buying our books regularly and stuff, we want them to kind of get the information earlier so that we can provide free things for them and to sort of, you know, thank them. Ooh. Nice. I had a delivery. <laughs> we want to thank everybody, basically, for you know buying our stuff and for being loyal people and getting all the things when they come out. And it seems a shame we don't want you to have to get the things and buy them when they're coming out free, do we, for the e-books and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. We want to give you the option. And the only way we can do that is if you sign up to the newsletter so that you can click on it and you can get that information before other people do. And it's difficult to get the it's difficult to get the fact that the newsletter's out there, isn't it? We're having trouble sort of promoting that really so people get to know about it. Well, too, like besides the 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 free ebooks and all that stuff, there's also gonna be like we have contests and stuff going on right now. Like you could a little character, like if you're on our Facebook page, you can see there's a little me and Zoe little Slasherton-esque character. We have a contest going right now um, that if you show us a picture of the weirdest place you play with your sack and all this other stuff, um, yeah. we'll make a little, or Zoe will draw up a little character of you that gets killed by sack in the October book. You know, yeah. so... There's that, it's and then cool, right? it's super cool. Who doesn't want to yeah. get killed by a sack? Exactly. But um, we also are going to be having figures, like little collectible figures of the characters. They're on there as well. The first, the sack, um, little collectibles that I've done um, are on there, and the hand painted, aren't they? Little individual things, and they're going to be coming out as well. But we're we're thinking of doing the books first before we do those so that people get to know who the characters are. But they're already done a few of them. They're already sort of ready to in go. progress. Yeah. And then they with the keychains and the shirts and the yeah. you know stuff like that. So like there's a bunch of stuff and if you are a part of the if you subscribe to the Gorzet, then you'll know all this shit before anyone else knows it. So um, yeah. that is a really cool way to do that. And then if you want the Creeper Crew news, which is, we talk about Slasherton and that too a little bit, but also all the books and the films and the music because I do way too much stuff than I should. And um, so, blah, blah, blah. So you could join that by just, if you go to 
creepcreeperson.com, if you go to creepersoncast.com, if you go to creepersonfilms.com. On all my sites, there's a little link to sign up for the newsletter. And I think we're doing the newsletters every Sunday, right? Yeah. Is that how we've been doing? Yeah, I think so. And yeah. are we saying now about... Oh, no, we'll not mention yet about self, because that depends when we get it all done, doesn't it? Well, you already ruined it. Why? I'm just kidding. Um, the the <laughs> third book in the Slasherton series, uh, Stealth, is going to be out on August 13th. And we're going to try to make the 13th be the day we release everything. So every month on the 13th, there will be a new Slasherton book. So that's the plan right now. Yeah. Zoe just oh. heard it for the first time. Yeah, I did. I'm sweating a bit now. <laughs> so there's okay. that. Okay, that's totally under control. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So yeah, so that's that's the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, where can people find you? Um, I'm just trying to think what's the best way to do it. Well, like um, on Twitter, I have... I'm I'm at Creeperson, and you're at Brit Zombie Girl. Brit Zombie Girl, yeah. And Facebook. I don't know what the address is for Facebook. Is it just like Facebook? Facebook just, slash just, fi just find it. Yeah, it's facebook.com slash Slasherton. Um, yeah. Slasherton.com is the website. Um, yeah. And yeah, eventually, it's on, the, on the website, isn't it? We've got that up and running. Yeah, I, th I think eventually we might go ahead and do a site for this too, that just yeah. has more info and stuff like that. That seems like something we should do, right? Yeah. I think yeah. So. More in de in depth stuff, technical stuff, and things that people might find interesting. Okay. And useful. Um, yeah. I've also got a blog where I put all my art stuff. Up. On, which is a bit lengthy. It's Brit Zombie Girl Art Blog. Dot WordPress. Dot com. That's right, isn't it? Brit Zombie Girl Art Blog. Dot WordPress. Dot com. It's not oh. at blog. Art no. blog. Art Brit Zombie blog. Girl Art Blog. Art Blog. Yeah. Dot WordPress. Dot com. Yeah. Thing. And I've also got my shop, but I can't remember what that is. It's Brit Zombie Girl. A big cartel, I think. Yeah, and I have creepsmart.com. Yeah. Yeah, we have well, way we'll too have much to... stuff. I swear yeah, to God, we'll... like within the next two weeks, I'm going to have a, just the creeperson.com site. We'll have every other site. I know, because we, we spend too much time just telling people pimp, 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 pimp. Jesus and it... fucking Christ, right? I know. Yeah, we got to stop that. So while you're here on the YouTube channel... Take a look at my trailers. Which I know. Should be here. Is that where it will be? I fucking don't know. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um. So anyway, for 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 creep and Zoe. Are we? Hi. Hang on. Before we go, are we no, planning I'm on waiting. doing this weekly? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do another episode on Sunday. Um, so um, more yeah, people probably. could watch it and live and comment and all that other stuff. Um, okay. I've been watching. I've been watching the YouTube channel and it's something fucked up and it crashed. Oh. So. Okay. But um, but we'll have to like let people know a bit in advance before when we're going to do it so they get plenty of time, you know, to send us... Yeah. Well, we, well, we should have an actual time. Like, we go, yeah, yeah at noon on Sunday yeah. or something like that, we'll know to do it. Yeah. Something like and, that. Yeah, so people can... You, we, we would love you to give us questions or just say hi or whatever. Criticism, whatever. We can take it. That like, if you want me to dress up like something... <laughs> like you, want, you want me to wear clown makeup, or um, oh, he's so begging. He's what he means is somebody please ask him <laughs> to wear clown makeup. If you want me to wear my, awesome. if you want me to wear my Viking outfit <laughs> and braid my beard, yeah, I would like that. Everybody asks him to do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, yeah. Good times. So yeah. download sack this week and. Um, 
get ready for bacon on Friday. Okay, and... stop pimping. We're going. All right. <laughs> okay, thanks, everybody. <laughs> thanks, everyone.